The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. Welcome to your Health and Wellness Hour, sponsored by Luminosity Wellness Center here in Las Vegas, coming to you from the studios of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting. Our goal is to incite and ignite all your senses and curiosities. So sit back, relax, open your mind and your heart, and enjoy the show. Hi, good afternoon. This is Shay Sisler here today at the Luminosity um, Health and Wellness Hour. And today we're talking about relationships. And I have a guest with me today, Muriel Fullis. So we're going to talk to her and have her introduce herself a little bit and tell us a little bit about her and how she got into relationships. So a little bit about you, Muriel. Hi. So as you can hear, I'm locally raised and born. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we can tell by that accent. Yeah, I no. know. <laughs> I was born and raised in France. And when I was 18 years old, I fell in love with Israel. So I decided to continue and go study there. Mm -hmm. And I studied something that has nothing to do with what I'm doing today. Mm -hmm. I studied accounting and economics. But although I started my career in that, mm -hmm. people were constantly coming to me and mostly women, a few men too, but right. mostly women, because I think they felt safe because I was not judgmental mm -hmm. and telling me about their problems with their boyfriends, their husband, <laughs> what to do. and. I have, I don't know why, or I have a suspicion that it's because as a young kid, my parents had a very hectic relationship. Right. And I was always wanting to soothe my mother's sadness or when, when they were fighting. So that's just a skill you learned as growing exactly. up. Exactly. Yeah. I remember actually as an eight year old, like I was at the kitchen table and I saw my mom cry and I was like, I would do anything if she could stop crying now. Mm -hmm. So I got in the habit to try to really have people feel, feel better. Mm -hmm. And because I'm an empath, and I don't know if people know what empath yeah, is. Yeah, we probably ought to tell our guests what yes. an empath is, just so, so they're an aware of that. Empath is somebody who can absorb other people's energy, other people, they can feel other people's emotion. And I didn't really know that I was doing that, but because I can feel what they feel, then I know how to help them. Right. That makes sense. Yes, absolutely. And so I I continued working in accounting. I met my ex-husband there in Israel, who was from California, so he wanted to come back. I said, why not? Yeah, why not? Hey, <laughs> At the time, I had one daughter. <laughs> yes, I'm open, you know. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and we came back. Um, I, I worked in accounting until I had two other kids with him. And then I divorced, and while I was working in accounting, I started to, why not to make people pay for the advice that I was yeah, giving? Yeah, that you're giving freely yes, to everybody. Uh, because <laughs> I was helping wherever I was going, if somebody was coming and they needed some help, I was helping. So I decided to get certified. Mm -hmm. And where did you get certified at? How I got certified with something called uh, quantum life coaching, uh -huh. which is, it's not typically relationships, but it is coaching and it's also about energy, mm -hmm. about past lives, about, you know, the, what you project in the world, uh, the brain also. Mm -hmm. So I used all those tools. Um, I started learning also with Tony Robbins, you know, going to his seminars. Mm -hmm. So for the past 16 years, I've been learning and learning tools. Along the way. Yeah. Picking and up. Skills. Everything that was really working for me, I kept in mind. And when I got certified, I created a um, toolbox, let's say, mm -hmm. of all the tools that really work. And in 2012, I got out of a, because I divorced from that dysfunctional relationship, mm -hmm. but it got worse. Oh, wow. <laughs> and you're like, now what? <laughs> yes. So I got into a very painful relationship back in 2012 which really was painful when it ended. And at this moment, I, uh, I was so, there was a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. I woke up one night and I said, 
I'm going to figure out why I'm creating that in my life or I'm going to stay alone for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not going through that again. Now, did you have pain on your other divorce when, you know, I mean, is it a different kind of pain um, from this one? Somehow oh. it was easier mm -hmm. because the divorce, the marriage was not working, so I made the decision to leave. So right. it's always easier when you make, you the, make decision the decision. You make the decision, correct. Uh, the other relationship was he left so i felt so you know a all the abandonment painful. fear and all that yes. came up. Okay. and i went back and relearned everything about the subconscious because i was a coach so i said okay i know about it i'm on top of it mm -hmm. that was a big mistake because you you're not on top of your subconscious you right. either have the right programming in there and it helps you create what you want or not and that's what happened to me mm -hmm. so I went back I found what I had to do to change my programming mm -hmm. so on, on my brain <clears throat> in my brain on a brain level and also I started practicing energy tools because mm -hmm. I became certified in Reiki mm -hmm. so I understood energy even more and I combined both because we really are creating with both we think right it creates emotion in our body this emotion is also creating energy and then i always explain to people it's like an elevator mm -hmm. whatever floor you're going to stop at you're going to be matched with what is whatever that, that is floor. yeah so you want to stop at the penthouse <laughs> <laughs> but we all get kind of stuck at yes. three and four before we get up there a True. lot of times so True. and yeah. uh that's what happened to me so now i'm very grateful actually Mm. for that relationship which forced me to go back and really change the patterns right so so let me ask you when you first got out of that relationship though and you were going through all this you didn't see that as a good thing at the time oh no right no so it took all this exploration and this self-development and this learning to really look at the benefits of that relationship it, and view it from different eyes. Yes. I knew that it will end up being a blessing, but I was but not, not when in you're the blessing. writing it. No. I um yeah. you know there are there is something called from Elizabeth Kubler Ross, the five stages of grief. Five stages of grief. So yeah, you have to go it. through those five stages and really go through the strong emotion of anger and sadness and depression if you want to let it out. Um what you can't feel, you can't heal. That's always what mm -hmm. I'll tell people. So you must be willing to feel the pain if you want to let it go. Yeah, because you know, so many times you you come out of a relationship and people just expect you to just pop out of it. Yeah. And you're like, I don't know how, you know what I mean? But saying that, going through those five stages of grief, and if you really look at it, you know, and experience it truly, yes, that's the best way to get through. Because if you don't, then you have residue left over if you so. don't life always murmurs to you what you have to change if you don't listen it's going to be a little bit louder then it's going to shout and then it's going to kick you in the butt yeah sorry for and we've <laughs> already been there before yes. many times too so, so <laughs> it's better to react before that <laughs> yeah well and right now i'm mean, talking about energy the energy right now is really powerful and people are experiencing things like lessons that they're supposed to learn. If they haven't learned them at this point, they're coming on tenfold right now yes. because now is the time to get a handle on these learnings that you're supposed to get. And so people who are in very disruptive relationships yes. or, you know, they're, they're there for a reason to take away that learning. Absolutely. and whatever it is to overcome that and uh, figure it out and that's why you're here today because you know we're going to talk about how people can you know get through get that process and what yes. we can do yes so uh definitely the energy is very intense right now yes. very very intense and i have the feeling that it takes a shorter time from your mind to the manifestation of it than before Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. we have to be careful and with, with everything that's going on in the world too, we have to be careful to not feed the wrong field of energy because yes. there is the fear and everything. And I think it's not really relationships, but as far as energy, if you want to do what you can do at your own level, because we can't 
we can control what's going on at our level, right. but yeah. our control is in our thoughts and the energy yeah, that we put out there. So that's going to make the scale tip one way or another. I think it's a very crucial time right now. Yes. And thoughts are so powerful. Yes. And we're going to bring that back to relationships, but thoughts are powerful and thoughts are what create our world. And based on your thoughts, whether you're thinking negative or positive, you're going to create that oh. around you. So Absolutely. if you're thinking negatively, all that negative energy is just going to keep coming to you and at you. Yeah. And you're like questioning why. And because I've read so many people lately who keep saying, why does this keep happening to me? Why? Why? You know, and I hear that all the time. And, you know, I want to sit down and talk to him about a lot of the stuff that we're talking about today. But a lot of people don't understand that. So it's really hard. It is. It is be because they don't realize that we are energy being before anything else mm -hmm. and that we stop at that floor. Yeah, yeah. And we need to become the first way to go up a level is awareness. Mm -hmm. So that's crucial. That's yeah. really crucial. And so back to your story, you know, you got over your so relationship. So I got so. over that relationship and out of that came a, a coaching program, which both combined. So it combines the coaching tools that I've learned. I also do tapping. If people don't know what it is, it's called also emotional freedom technique. And it's a combination of using the nervous meridians that they use in acupuncture mm -hmm. and uh, psychology, uh, psychology tools. Mm -hmm. So we combine both modern psychology and that, and we can create a different wiring in the brain. It's very powerful. So I combined all the tools that I really, really felt were working for me and started to teach that to other women and it worked for them too and mm -hmm. i got great feedback so i created what i now call date like a french woman uh -huh. <laughs> because i'm french so i thought you know what i might as well yeah, yeah. <laughs> and plus i love infusing a little bit of french dating aspects right. that people don't necessarily know or practice here it's a little bit different so right. I'm having a lot of fun with well it. and we all kind of romanticize about exactly. French you know yes. men or yes. French women and so yeah bringing that little bit of you know yes uniqueness into that kind of helps it is so. I, I love I have an exercise exercise with an apple that teaches about intimate relationship mm -hmm. with a French does touch mm -hmm. and I really enjoy that and so what what is the program I know we can't go into the program itself but what does it consist of and so the program <clears throat> is made of out of several modules mm -hmm. and the the longer program depending on where on where people fall uh, into the let's say what their situation is because some people they struggle a little bit but it's not that difficult some people like i used to be attract very very dysfunctional relationships and toxic relationships uh, and yeah. i'm a recovering codependent so mm -hmm. you're really hooked <laughs> and you have the right hook to attract the people that you don't want mm -hmm. so when it's somebody like me i think six months you have to dig uh, the first um three months you really dig dig deep into finding what are your programs when were they implanted and how mm -hmm. uh, you work on self-acceptance because of course it's the key and then you go into loving yourself and mm -hmm. all the aspects of it because it's very broad then you go into a vision but not like of course you have to write down what you want in your soulmate or in your partner but I mix also energy into that. I mix emotion because to me, if you are too set in your like unflexible vision, you may pass somebody that life has for you, which is could make you 10 times happier than you right. ever thought you could be. Mm -hmm. And then I have a section on practical tools and preparation, mental, energy, physical about going back to dating. Mm -hmm. and actually being able to spot what you don't want. Right, right I off. have a client who has been married three times with addicts. And when she first came to me, she I, I asked her what she wanted. She was not even able to picture it in her head. Yeah. There was only pain and, and yeah. suffering and difficulty. So we worked together and then she went back to dating and it was amazing to her because she could spot 
the red flags that she has been ignoring for so many years. Oh, wow. So you helped her and see those. Like, okay, I don't want this one. And that way she can <laughs> focus on the ones that could be a potential right. uh, match. Yeah. Well, do you find women like of our age that have, you know, going back out into the dating world, it's really difficult it's a to do that? Because I know a lot of women, <laughs> I th I'm not dating anymore. I'm done. I'm not going there. But yet deep in their heart, they really yes. want that. But they don't know how to get back into that. And those know. are my best clients because there is a level of fear that is very, very high because they went into relationships where there was pain and suffering and betrayal. Right. I mean, I understand that because I've dated the guys who cheat on you. I've dated a guy who cheated on me with younger women, which is even harder to live through because you can't fight age yeah. there is no competition and it kind of hits level. your ego yes. it you hits know, you really really heart. down to your core yeah. but it's a good thing because that's what helped me uh go low uh, like deeper than the physical mm -hmm. and really connect with my true essence and my right. true value because when you connect with that there is no more competition Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be with who you're supposed to be. And if you really connect with the, your true self and work on loving yourself and identifying with your true self instead, instead of your body, of course, when we see ourselves in the, in the mirror, we also identify with our body. But when you're able to look at yourself and really say, I love you, instead of looking at the wrinkles and everything, right, makes a big, big because difference. Because you need to look at the true essence of exactly. who you are and not... Yes this physical body that we're wearing. Yes. Do you find that a lot of the women that do come and see you have to work through the pain first though? Of course. Before they can move forward because... They have to understand why it happened mm -hmm. without judgment. It's not about making ourselves guilty, but it's about understanding that we have a responsibility. Right. We let them do that to us because there is the desire to be loved, the fear of abandonment, and all those things that go back to childhood. So understand how it came into your life, and then you need to let go. Mm -hmm. And when you work on self-love, when we work on self-love, we also work on self-forgiveness, that's mm -hmm. huge, and forgiving the other too. Mm -hmm. And to me, forgiving is not saying that the person what they did was okay not approving of yes it, but yeah. it's about releasing the negative emotional attachment to that they have their own relationship with the divine or the universe no matter what you call mm -hmm. it that's their business yours right. is to manage your side of the fence yeah and to let that go because somehow they were your teacher they came here as a mirror and we came to them as a mirror to yeah. reflect what needs to be healed well, and, and what I've learned is over the years, if you don't release that anger or, you know, love that person and forgive them, then it causes illness within oh, yes. our, us. Oh, yes. So we need to let that go, you know. And do you find, though, a lot of your um, women have been holding on to that? It's like a security blanket. They want to hold on to that, you know, anger. And you have to let them see the, or help them see the bigger picture. Because and, somehow it, it's a protection. If you mm -hmm. stay with the anger, you make sure that it doesn't happen again. I know it's cr totally illogical, but it is it is a protection. Yeah. Uh, when, because to really relate and connect with someone else, and when I coach people, I coach on love relationships, but it really affects all the other other relationships in your life. Because the way we behave in love is an accentuated way of where we behave. Mm -hmm. in all other areas. I know for me professionally, it has changed my professional life. It ripples. Yeah. So it, somehow they're trying to protect themselves and when they let go of that and they become vulnerable but aware right. of seeing what they're dealing yeah. with, it's such a relief and everything, many things fall into place. Mm -hmm. So it's really somehow it's very important. It's magical. And, yeah, magical. <laughs> it's beautiful. Wow, yeah, that's great. You know, I also find that a lot of people um, the self love thing is really difficult. And um, I did a session the other day on past life, and and the lady came in and she was really really struggling emotionally, and she was having problems with her husband. They've been together for some time, but they're living in separate bedrooms right now, and. 
I had a really hard time even getting through the interview portion because she was so emotional. Yeah. And one of the things that I noticed about her relationship was I felt like she didn't really love herself because she was allowing this relationship to unfold and not in her favor. And so I simply asked her, you know, may I ask you a question? And she says, sure. And so I says, do you love yourself? And she just kind of looked at me and then she stared at me for, it seemed like <laughs> five minutes, you know, <laughs> but then she says, well, yeah, we all love ourselves, don't we? And then because I do past life regression and when I connected with her higher self, her higher self said that she needed to love herself yes. more. That was the message that came through in her session, loud and clear over everything else that she needs to love herself. So a lot of times we don't even realize that we don't because love ourselves. Because it's so hard to look at yourself and say, I don't love myself. Mm -hmm. And actually when I do mirror work with people, I have people who cannot tell themselves that they, like I love you with their name, they cannot. Mm -hmm they can absolutely not so some will giggle so it cancels what they just said some will just say no I can't do it or some will start crying and that's the best thing because that means there is a, a release of energy uh -huh. and I actually had a client we were doing tapping and I was trying to tell in during the tapping to seal the session to have her say I am enough which is also saying I love myself I I am enough she was she could not she had like her brain was going blank every time there was a, a barrier that she couldn't wow get over. Barrier she get over so now. we oh yes I did Franklish sorry <laughs> 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 I do that sometimes <laughs> um, so we took some back door and we found out that when she was 19 her father tried to kill her oh my goodness and even wow. going before that in her life he never gave her an approval uh for anything or confirmation that she was enough wow. so we don't realize we and she was right. a professional functioning in life a business and everything there is always that little child in us and most of us unless we have done the work most of us because parents are not perfect i'm a parent i make mistakes i make right. mistakes right. so it's enough for you to have a parent that makes the same mistake several times you're going to internalize a message that you're not enough because mm -hmm. you're too young to analyze what's really going on and so here you go all your life with that message that you're not enough so it's crucial to get in touch with that and then to not let that little child who's afraid driving the bus when you're going for example dating which happens a lot Mm -hmm. which I experienced yeah. until I realized what was going on. Mm -hmm. so. so so how how can someone um, work on their inner child stuff or loving themselves before they come to see you? To um, Affirmations okay. work really, really well. Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel weird. I'm warning you. You're going to look at yourself <laughs> in the mirror and say, I love you. And say, oh, that's, that's nonsense. That's stupid. But that's just resistance that's mm -hmm. your mind resisting so give it 30 days at least with doing it twice a day at least and say it over and over in the mirror look at yourself like if you were your sister if you were your best friend in your mm -hmm. eyes that's extremely powerful another thing is treat yourself like when you go to make yourself a cup of tea for example make it like if you were doing it for a beloved and give it to yourself all those little gestures, they reach the inner child. And that's a beginning before yeah. they can even work with someone like me or someone else. Right. It's a beginning. It's an entry door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know that we all have that because, and I, and I just realized myself recently that I have that little child inside of me that's really stubborn and resistant to a lot oh, of yes. things. So, yeah. So it's good to know that. And hopefully, you know, they can work on that before they actually come and see you. Yes. So I know mine was having tantrums when oh, yeah. I was dating and I said this is not the right relationship because after all the work that I've done if I go um, and I'm in a relationship with someone either a friend even I mean now I have only people in my life that I really who honor me mm -hmm. and I honor them because I'm very selective but in the past relationship 
the last one that I had after I changed, I didn't last very long in that relationship because I saw that it was going, going, you know, yeah, spiraling the same down, way. out of control. Yeah. But I, I felt my inner child saying, "I don't want him to abandon yeah. me," and I, I had to really be firm with that part of myself and say, "You're gonna calm down. I'm here," and Take literally put my you. hand on my heart and talk to her. Wow. And that sounds weird when people don't know about uh, <laughs> the inner dialoguing child with your so child, yeah. and, but that works. Yeah, well, it does good. work. Well, great. Well, I know that we have um, a lot of really great information that they can pick up from you when we go to the training um, that you have. Now, is your course online or is it, do so you do it in person? I do it do right now, um, live, live classes online. I'm recording a fully recorded program that will be ready, I, I'm not sure exactly, in the next few months. But for people who want to experience that and they don't know if they want to be part of the program, I have free master classes and they can check that out. Okay. Okay. And then also, you um, do you ever offer just like a, a little small mini class on tapping or how to work with your um, inner child or how to love yourself or is that all just kind of combined into your... So right now I did. Uh -huh. uh, right now in the program that I'm recording, there, there are different modules. If the person doesn't want to take the full program, there are different modules. But I'm also in the process of creating some classes. Uh, for example, one that I'm really thinking about doing is uh, Awaken Your Dating Goddess. Mm -hmm. So in that you have, because I belly dance, so I like oh, fun. people to move their hips because yeah. it awakens the feminine. Yeah. So there are, I, they okay. can go get in touch with me on my website. And okay, well maybe after we get back from break, yes. then we can maybe talk about some of those other things. So um, anyway, we're gonna take a quick break and we will be right back and we'll continue our discussion today with Muriel and uh, we'll find out what other secrets she can give us today. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy Terry here with your car care tip of the day. Today's tips on cooling systems. This vehicle's got about 182,000 miles on it, so if you're checking the coolant, check the hoses too. Just feel them and see if they're soft or any signs of fatigue for the mileage on it. They don't feel bad. They look like they're still the original hose, but you want to make sure you don't go too long with these hoses because they will eventually deteriorate, cause a problem. In this case, this car's got a, a visible leak. The customer brought it to us. We'll pop the hood and check the cooling system. First, we just relieve any pressure that might be on the cap. Remove the cap. Take a look inside. We see it's kind of low. Now we'll start our inspection. What we found on this one is the top tank is leaking. It's got a crack in it. Pretty common for these plastic radiators to do that. I want to get to a shop right away because severe engine damage can result from overheating condition like this. In this case, it was pretty easy to see the crack was right on the top tank. But a lot of times we'll have to pressurize the system to locate the exact leak. Could be a hose in the back, could be underneath. Some of these are hard to find. But in this case, a very common leak, the top tank. When we're testing a cooling system, it's okay to use just water. But you want to make sure when you're filling it up properly, it's a 50-50 mix of antifreeze and water. It needs the water to make the chemical work. So don't just put straight antifreeze. 50-50 mix is the best way to go. Keep it clean, keep it rust free. So as you can see, we got a pretty active leak. You gotta get this fixed or there's gonna be some engine problems. If you're gonna top off your own coolant, it's really not that hard. If you got a radiator cap, just make sure it's not hot. Take the cap off and take a look. In this case, we're pretty full here, but what we have is the overflow jugs empty. So we'll just add that. Once again, check your manufacturer specs to make sure what type of coolant you have. In this case, we're using the good old green. There's gold, there's red, there's yellow, all types out there. Just wanna make sure you're staying with your manufactured recommended coolant. And that's really all there is to it. The cooling system is a major component. You will wanna service that regularly. If you have a problem, it could be too late and cost you thousands of dollars. If ever you have a problem, come into Sun Valley Automotive. It's no charge to look at your cooling system. This is Crazy Terry with your car care tip of the day. Hi, I'm Joe Peroni. And I'm Heidi Mancini, and we're the hosts of the Rise Above show. Check us out on WWDB-TV on Thursday afternoons at 2 p.m. Hi, we're back again. Um, with Muriel Fullis 
and we're going to continue talking about relationships today. So, um, Muriel, I'd like to find out how or why did you get into what you're currently doing? What got you started on this? Uh, what got me started was I kept seeing women who were so, they were tensed. They, they were somehow, I would say, in pain, so hard with themselves, mm -hmm. uh, bullying themselves internally like no one else could do it outside because we would say, okay, you're out. Yeah. And I, I talking with them, I saw that, you know, all the medias that we have around us and all the world today, which is about perfection and you have to be young, you have to be performant, you have to be whatever you have to be. It puts such pressure on women. Right. And here in Las Vegas, uh, I keep hearing it's so hard to date and it's, and women are mean to each other. And that really breaks my heart that women are mean to each other and see each other as competition. Mm -hmm. because I think that there is so much power in sisterhood yes. and in relating to women with love. It makes us stronger. It makes us more beautiful. It's really something that is necessary to go back to. We've, we mm -hmm. have forgotten that a little bit. Yeah, and I do see the sisterhood growing because I see groups of women getting together all the time nowadays, which is coming. I think it's changing from yes. what it used to be. It we does. still have a long way to go though. Yes. So. so I started doing like circles of women even in my house. And I saw women coming in the door like very guarded. And by the time they were leaving, there was warmth and there was, it was something else completely. And that oh, wow. really inspired me to continue. Uh huh. That's good. It's beautiful. And so, so through your journey, what have you learned the most about this whole event and, and thing that you've, you know, that you're on? What have you learned about women and about men? And um, I've learned that we each have our place mm -hmm. and it's not about being equal and doing exactly the same thing. It's about knowing where you best fit. Yeah. And for women, um, I work a lot about going back into your feminine, into, you know, the feminine is flowy and gentle and nurturing. And some women, um, interpret that as weakness mm -hmm. and I used to be one of them because I've all, I've, I grew up with a father who was putting women who were too feminine they were he was putting them down with remarks so I always had the impression that I had to be strong and you know like going to the restaurant and pay my half and and I when you do that when you don't let a man shine because men love to do things for women mm -hmm. They love to be the knight, you know. Right, the knight in shining armor. Yes, yeah. And it's not about saving us, but it's about providing some kind of. It's not service, but it's being in his own place where it's, he can shine the most. Right. Yeah. And let him do that. Uh, let him do stuff for you. Of course, you can open your own door. You can open your own jar. You can. But when you have those little place for him to come in and give it to you and serve you and it creates a balance it mm -hmm. creates a beautiful harmony mm -hmm. and uh, that was one of the things also that I wanted to teach women to go back to gentle gentle is strength right gentle with awareness of course it's not about loving everybody and being yeah. a doormat but honoring yourself and honoring him. It's not because you're working on yourself and in, on attracting someone who's compatible that you don't need to honor him. You need, I hate it when women are so feminist that they talk about men like, you know, in a negative way. How right. do you want to attract someone if you have all that negativity exactly. that you're putting out there because you're yes. going to attract you what you put out that and so. on a brain level you have something called the reticular activating system which works like a filter so if you believe that all men are garbage because some women are very aggressive very vocal about that's it. what mm -hmm. you're going to see in the world yeah. the world is what we think about mm -hmm. so and that's really a pity for me because there is such beauty into a relationship with our harmony. Right. And yeah. when you start practicing self-love, when you start really going in and being gentle with yourself, you become also gentler mm -hmm. with the world too. So have you been able to change the perception of women 
and the way they think? Have you had some really good success stories? And I had um, actually the story that comes to mind. So I mentioned my uh, client who has been married three times uh -huh. in addict addictive relationship. Um, I have one in Israel who was for two years she was in a relationship that wasn't working and she was finally able to break even from that and now she's letting herself being approached by a man that he was she would never have left in her life before uh -huh. because we mistake we mistaken I am not sure I'm not doing like incorrect English yeah <laughs> <laughs> we confuse um, love and emotional addiction and we f if we're talking about France, for example, France is a very romantic country, but it's all a very passionate country and a lot of drama. It's like, you know, I have an image in my head about a cartoon, Ratatouille. I think it's Disney or Pixar. And there is one scene where the rat is cooking and in the flat below, there is a couple, a French couple, and they're fighting and she's almost killing him with a gun. And mm -hmm. then suddenly she drops the gun and she's like, and they're kissing uh -huh. in a passionate way. <laughs> and that's a lot like this, like ups and downs, yeah. up, which is not a balanced relationship. Right. It's very but that's good. The way it's it good is. looking <laughs> in the movies, but come on. <laughs> right. So uh, people are mistaken about what love is. And when you biochemo biochemically uh, addicted to drama, that's what you look for in the world. Yeah. And you're not going to see the good guys. You're going to see the guys that are going to create drama for you. Right. So that's crucial well, to understand. And it amazes me, though, how many people that I meet and know out there actually who have such drama in their relationship, but they can't imagine their life being any different. They want that kind of a life. Because I it's, guess. It's, so. it's an addiction at a biochemical level. Uh, people, for example, who are angry all the time. The, you know how an, an addiction works? You have uh, on the membrane of the cell, you have a receptor, and that's what's going on with people who take heroin, for example. So you develop that receptor because you've taken the heroin, and then your body's gonna ask for it. It's gonna ask for it. So it's gonna trigger thoughts that are gonna push you to take that substance. Same thing with emotional addiction. If you have a receptor for anger, and that's your dominant emotion during the day, you're going to look for thoughts that are going to make you perceive your reality through a filter where you can get angry because your body needs it. So even in changing mentally, there is a period where it's not comfortable because first of all, it's new and we right. all are afraid of the uh, uncertainty. And second of all, there is even a biochemical, like almost, uh, how do you call it when the addicts are going in withdrawal? to a certain level that's what happens so it mm -hmm. is uncomfortable and you feel like going back to your default mode because it is your default mode it's a habit that you've been practicing for years so mm -hmm. it's about breaking first of all awareness to know what's going on and then breaking the habit over and over so you can trigger a different wiring of the brain and then it creates a different biochemical release mm -hmm. so it's wow. it's it starts with awareness and mm -hmm. what I run into a lot of times when I, I had a conversation with a woman today who was about she has a marriage that doesn't work she has a crush on somebody else who's married too and I told her you know she said well but he's married and I said you know you're married too right she said yeah well <laughs> you had a reminder <laughs> <laughs> we're separating I said okay, okay but I told her if you go it's okay, you're separating from your marriage, it didn't work. You go and you are attracted by someone who's not available. On a certain level, you are not available. There is something in you that is looking for someone who's not available, so you don't really take the chance of creating a new relationship that's gonna last. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, I don't think so. We are not aware. And if you cannot be open enough to think that it's a crazy idea, but you're willing to try because you've been leaving stuff that you don't want to leave until now you won't change you yeah, need to be willing wow. to try stuff that you know what i might as well because it has been so bad cannot get worse mm -hmm. <laughs> that's usually <laughs> when people change it has been so bad they said you know what i don't care i'll try anything give me whatever Something, you have yeah yeah well what do you say about the people who um 
you know when you meet someone and you fall in love and you're you think you're in love right but you just it's like life is wonderful and I always call it the shining stage mm -hmm. of a relationship because then you're in the relationship and then a few months down the road pretty soon you start seeing all the little things that you didn't notice before but all of a sudden they start kind of popping up so, so what do you I call would that? say there would there would be two aspects to it first when we start we're on our best behavior and sometimes we want it so much that we are willing to ignore we are willing to ignore they're also on their best behavior because right. we are busy with the relationship in our life and we are more conscious we are really consciously trying to make it work consciously uh, ap appreciating mm -hmm. we are there we are in the present moment appreciating having fun now things happen life comes back and you have the bills you have the kids if you have some whatever you have to take care of you cannot continue being fully conscious of that relationship and make a conscious effort to make it work 24 7 because you have stuff to do so if your subconscious programming is one that is going to uh, coincide with a belief that for example love is painful or there are no good men out there that's how you're going to behave and mm -hmm. same thing on the other side usually people who have been through several very painful relationships we have a pattern we we say they're dysfunctional but we are dysfunctional it's right a, it's a right. tango i do tango and i always say it's a dance uh -huh. and you are willing to dance that dance for sometimes it's not conscious it's because you're afraid you want love but then the dance becomes what it is on autopilot and that's where you you realize that it's it's not a good fit unless you're going to change and the other aspect is that you you start seeing the things that you haven't seen right because you they really open your eyes up. they were well, there they weren't there in you're, most you're cases, not willing but, to ignore anymore but they could have been there and we just weren't looking too and sometimes we know it in the back of our yeah, head yeah i know i've done that <laughs> i've done that <laughs> yeah i know even with anything i mean even with food i know i shouldn't eat that but i rationalize it well you know, I oh, I have so little pleasure in my life. I'm going to go for it. You, right. We know. <laughs> we do know. We do know. And your yes. body, our bodies that don't lie. Yeah. The energy doesn't lie. Yeah. And so what about, and this, this always baffles me too. I'm, I've had friends in relationships and they meet a married man, right? They're cheating on their wife. Well, the guy will get divorced, marry her. They have kids and then all of a sudden the man's cheating again and she's just devastated and wondering why and i'm like i always look at them and i'm like okay they did that to you so what makes you think he's changed or any different and it works both ways not just yeah. you know men well but. what i would say is the one who cheats of course there is an underlying uh, uh, belief that love isn't safe or something that's here to create drama instead of happiness but also it's never on one side only yeah uh there are signs when a relationship is not healthy anymore and most in most cases sometimes one of the person is seeing it tries to alarm the other and there is no response sometimes they are both in denial and think that the grass is greener somewhere else yeah uh, there are signs and sometimes it's really a pity because it's a matter of willing to become vulnerable with each other mm -hmm. willing to have enough courage to if the other one is not addressing it to say listen i love you but something is wrong and i want us to stay together so let's do something but that's yeah. an extremely vulnerable place right because first of all the other can blame you and say that happened to me in my marriage when i address that and my ex-husband told me you don't know how to love you should accept me the way I am. And I convinced myself of that. And right. I, I, I stayed a few more years and, and it's actually, I, I created the end of my marriage mm -hmm. by wanting to escape, not being able to escape, spotting someone else who said, I'm going to save you, mm -hmm. said, okay, I'm divorcing. I'm, I, I'm connecting with that person and told my husband, I want to divorce because it's not going well for the past five years and I've been telling you and then it took me eight years to forgive myself because mm -hmm. I didn't do the things with um, consciously mm -hmm. 
Right. And that's actually the first time that I'm saying it out loud because I carried so much shame. Right. Because I started a relationship two months before I really ended my marriage, who was already ended, but I, you know, it wasn't a clean right. way it to do it. Right. But it's mm-hmm. never on one side because people know it and they don't do anything about it until it's too late and there is so much fear and suffering that they think that this person is going to save them. <coughs> and of course, all the biochemicals of the beginning, they say, oh, I'm in love and that's it. And But I yeah. really want to tell people out there, if you are on the verge of cheating because it's not that anymore, come and see someone like me. Because if you are doing it, you're going to pay it for such a long time. You're going to make yourself do something that is not you, first of all, and then you're going to feel guilty for the rest of, I don't know how many years it's going to take. So mm-hmm. don't do that. Come see someone and get back to yourself. And if you have to leave, you leave, but you leave with harmony and clean with yourself. Yeah, and, and that's great and great message because I think that people sometimes need that when they get yes. in a relationship. And I'm um, just pointing out the, the session that I did this week, um, the young lady who came and saw me about her relationship. You know, because I'm a past life regressionist, she wanted to t- tap into her higher self and find out what she needed to do. And I found it really interesting because when she came to see me, she thought it was all her husband, right? Yeah. And when we actually tapped into her higher self, her higher self told her that she was driving him away. Yeah. Because she was putting too much pressure on him. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think that's really hard to hear. It is. From yourself, mind yes. you. Yes. Your higher self is telling you that you need to change this. And her message was she needs to love herself. And if she learns to love herself, then her husband will come back around. And she got the message her husband does love her. And so it was just her way of getting that confirmation that she learn that self-love and you quit driving him away because a lot of times we always think it is the other person taking that accountability in a relationship taking the ownership and making those changes is really up to us it's not always the other person like you said it does take two yes and it's it's hard to face sometimes because i had a relationship with someone who almost killed me Mm -hmm. and i was of course really mad but when it I really examined what was going on. That was what I needed at the time to really be done with this kind of people. Mm -hmm. So I somehow created that. I don't know if I created it, if life sent it to me. It doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. It's about seeing what needs to be healed. Where are you willing to put yourself in such a position that you are so vulnerable that it can cost you your life in order to gain love from somebody. It always goes back to self-love, always, in anything. Mm -hmm. It's the stem of everything, Mm -hmm. in love, in business, in everything. You have to really be able to love yourself and not in an arrogant way, in a pure, beautiful way. And, And then, only then you can really love others. Otherwise, you're lacking that love. So you don't really love your exchange, what you can give them so that you gain their love. And it's mm-hmm. not, it's not love, it's business. Right. It's a yeah. trade. Yeah. Well, I know we're running out of time. We only have a couple minutes left, but do we have time to tell your story that you said about um, when you were at Toastmasters? Do we have, is that a story that's longer than two minutes? Uh, oh, so um, no, it's so. a very short story. As far as dating and the approach of um, a relationship and seduction and everything, I was really shocked. I did a speech on at Toastmasters where I asked the people in the room what were their ideal Valentine's Day evening. So all the guys in the room said, well, I want her naked on the carpet in front of the chimney. And I was like, ooh, guys. Don't you (laughs) skip a few (laughs) stages here? What about, and that's the French in me. You know, the reading between the lines, the seduction, the the seduction, the the sensuality, the wearing almost nothing, but you're not naked because you leave space for the imagination. I was really surprised. (laughs) So I really make my mission now to teach, first of all, some women about that. Some have it, some don't. But men too, come on guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was really funny. Right. Well, and I know for me, that's what I prefer. I prefer the seduction, you know, yes. and most women do because if they don't get that, then they, they turn off, you know what I mean? And, they and shut that plus off, so. men 
they don't even know themselves because men are hunters. Yeah. So they love the hunt. It's a mini hunt in an evening. Yeah. You know, it's uh, going for what you want without... <laughs> It was still know. a hunt. It, it was really funny. It was really funny. <laughs> well, great. And I I really appreciate the time that you spent with us today. But so how would someone find you or how would they get a hold of you? And So they so. can go to my website, uh, datelikeafrenchwoman.com. And I also have a free Facebook group where I give free coaching. I mean, people come with questions. Um, I address. I give tips and tools. And it's also called Date Like a French Woman. So everywhere it's Date Like a French Woman. Okay. You'll find me. Perfect. <laughs> we'll also put the information in the bottom of our video here. So anytime anyone's looking at this after the show, then they'll be able to see it there as well. So great. thank you very much for thank coming you. with and namaste to namaste. you. Namaste. It was a and, pleasure. Yeah. And thank you, um, audience, for sharing this time with us today. We want to thank Muriel for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.